Well, welcome to Coffee with Job, chapter 32, the interesting, very interesting and often neglected chapters featuring Eli Hugh. Now, some of us complain a lot about young people. We say they're either too trivial or when they get involved with serious things, we state they're young and they do not know. It's not an attitude that the Bible takes. Whilst in our culture, there's a danger that we are infantizing infantilizing adults and treating children like adults. I think there's a balance in here and Eli is a fascinating character because he's a young man but he's also a very angry young man. These chapters are some of the most difficult and the most interesting in the whole book. There are those who argue that they're a later edition, but I don't think that is the case. Although Eli Hugh is not mentioned in the prologue or the epilogue. But this is, as, as Christopher Ash points out, I think this is Eli Hugh. And what he's doing is he's answering Job. And it, it's a kind of preparing the way for the Lord to answer Job. I think... In this sense, he really is genuinely prophetic. So, what do we know about him? Elihu is a Buzzite, which means a descendant of Abraham. And here he is, the angry young man. The words repeated four times. He's angry because Job is accusing God of being in the wrong. He's angry at his friends have been, his friends have been unable to refute Job. But I think there's passion there, but somehow it's also misplaced. Counseling from an angry heart can be dangerous. So, Martin Lloyd-Jones says this, never open the door to the devil. When you lose your temper, you open it wide. It could not be wider. Nothing opens the door more widely than anger. And, and for this good reason, the moment you are controlled by your temper, you are no longer able to reason. You are no longer able to think. You, are no, long, you no longer give a balanced judgment for you are altogether biased on one side and against the other side. Is there anything that leads to more trouble than anger? Things said in a bitter and angry moment. You would almost cut your tongue off if you could to get them back. And sometimes, though forgiven, they leave permanent wounds and scars. What havoc is wrought in this world by its sinful anger? How true is that? How true is that? Angry words. In verses 6 to 22, and we're going to come back to all of this, he comes across as a bit arrogant and, dare I say it, also a bit long-winded. I think he likes pastoral warmth. There's a great deal of theory in a lot of what he says. We must not take great slabs of truth and use them to hammer people. In such distress, tears of fellowship with suffering are far more profitable than lectures in harsh theology. Maybe there's a sense in which, I don't know if it's true of like you, but we can have the doctrines of grace in our minds but not apply them in our hearts. I think, as we see, there's also a little bit of egocentricism in there. Nineteen times he uses the word I or me. I think he's patronising at times. And I think he uses the language of modesty at times to disguise arrogance. He never offers to pray with Job. He doesn't know everything. He doesn't know about the heavenly court. He doesn't know about Satan. He doesn't know the real reason behind Job's suffering. And yet... Elihu is also right. He's a good listener. He's courteous. There's deference for age and experience. And he tells the truth. There are some brilliant gems in all of this. I think his idea, not his idea, but the truth that we need revelation is not just the wisdom of years, but we need God's revelation is very important. What about being young? Eli says, Eli Hughes says he is human, just like Job. We need to know our weaknesses, especially if we are to teach others. And let me also say this. I'm not utterly convinced that his anger is always wrong. Zeal for God and his truth are important. I would rather have an angry young man than an insipid, careless one. Sometimes we need people like that to challenge us. He's very direct. He refers to Job by his first name in his first speech, unlike Job's other friends. There's a sense in which preachers have to be as bold as brass. He's 
summons Job to court, which is what Job wants. Mind you, perhaps in Eli Hughes' mind, he's everything in this court, prosecution, judge and jury. So, we've already got someone who's a complex character. But I come back to this. I wish we had some more passionate young people in our churches who were passionate for the gospel, who didn't just buy into what was said, who were concerned for the glory of God, and who were prepared to challenge their elders as well. Give me a young man or a young woman with passion and a love for the Lord, and I think they'll go a long way. If any of you are younger and you're watching this, God bless you. And remember, it's good to be passionate, but it's good to have self-control as well. And if you can combine those two things together, it's wonderful. We shall return to LIU tomorrow. See you then. God bless. Bye.